Hi, it's Jo from Minerva and today we're going to look at my top 10 tips for sewing with stretch fabrics. Some people feel really comfortable sewing stretch and not woven fabrics because they like that um, element of error or movement in the fabric because that helps them match up their seams but some people don't like sewing stretch knits because maybe they're not using the right techniques that will help them gain success. I like sewing with stretch fabrics. This is a terry fabric so this is a sweatshirt fabric with a loop back on and this is the chalk and notch page hoodie. I love it because it has quite a feminine sleeve on it as well so you can have a straight sleeve and make it um, more of a sort of unisex hoodie or you can have this gathered sleeve which I really like because it makes it really really slouchy. Of course stretch fabric isn't just t-shirt fabric there are lots on our website so you can go and really explore so you might be looking for something with a rib you might be looking for uh, something with a sparkle like this one uh, you might be looking for something that's more stable so um, a ponty roma is a thick fabric that um, has more stretch in one direction than another. That's really good for making dresses because it's more stable, it's not so thin, uh, it's got a movement and it's opaque. There are some other more niche knit fabrics but you can go and check them all out. There's one called ITY which is an interlock fabric that's really, really slinky. So that's quite good for making underwear, petticoats, um, tops with a drape cowl on. So that's this fabric here. Or you could try looking for other stretch fabrics. So this is a pointel, uh, and a pointel fabric is really good for making underwear, pajamas. Um, it's got that sort of uh, thermal layer look. So, but it's very, very stretchy. So it's quite tricky to sew the seams together unless you're using the right stitch and you're using the right techniques. Number one is to choose the right fabric. So make sure when you choose your fabric and it says stretch that you go and check out the credentials of that stretch. Does it have stretch in all directions? Um, is, it, is it ribbed? So has it got lots of stretch in the width grain? You need to check out the width of the fabric and the stretch and stretch recovery and that's listed on our website. You can also get lots of different face cloths in stretch. So you might be looking for something that's a cotton you know, because you're going to wear it against your skin or you're going to make underwear from it. Or you might want to try something more adventurous. So you might be looking for something with some metallic in it, some lurex in it or a different uh, design or print. My number two tip is to know how to take the stretch of a fabric so you can find out the stretch credentials by measuring your fabric and measuring the stretch and here's how you do it. So here's my piece of Minerva exclusive sweatshirt fabric and this is the length grain because here's the selvage so this is the length grain and this is the width grain so when I match up the beginning of the fabric I can stretch it halfway across so that's five so I can stretch it five centimeters so that makes it 50% stretch on the length grain if I want to check so that was the length grain with the selvage running along the ruler if I want to check the width stretch which is sometimes different on stretch fabrics then this one doesn't stretch so far so that's just getting to three centimeters. So the width stretch is 30% and the length stretch is 50%. So if you've got a fabric and you're not sure and you bought it a long time ago because you really liked it and now you want to know if it works for a pattern um, but you don't have the details anymore, that's how you can check your stretch recovery and stretch on the width and length grain. Of course, you'll be needing to choose the right pattern to go with your fabric. So make sure that the pattern you choose is a stretch fabric. You can filter that out on our website, uh, stretch or woven. So make sure you can't just switch between patterns. If you do that, you will find that um, a stretch item will be too big because there's an element of ease in a stretch pattern, which probably makes it a little bit smaller so that you get um, sleeves that fit um, and figure hugging shapes. So make sure you've got the right pattern for your stretch fabric. You can find this out by reading the back of the packet. There are a few patterns that have mixes on, so sometimes on a pattern you might get view A is for stretch and view B is for woven. My favourite pattern that does this is New Look 6449. It's a really great value pattern because you can make the shirt dresses in woven and you can make the shift dresses in a stretch. 
Number four on my top tips is to choose your techniques carefully. So if you're sewing stretch, then you might need to be changing up how you are sewing. You need to sew stretch seams with a zigzag stitch, a very narrow zigzag stitch. So it just looks like a slight wobbly straight line and that will allow your seams to stretch. If you sew with a straight stitch, as soon as you stretch the fabric, it will break. In order to sew a successful zigzag, you might also need to use a stretch needle or a ballpoint needle. A stretch needle is best for two-way stretch, so uh, anything that's got quite a high elastic content um, because it's got a sharp tip and um, you can also use it for sewing elastic, so that's what stretch needles are for. A ballpoint needle might also be useful, it depends what your fabric is like. Um, this stops the uh, tip of the needle splitting and cutting the fabric so it's quite good to use with lycra fabrics because then you're not cutting the uh, lycra fibres inside the fabric and stopping them from being stretchy. So you, you might need to have a stretch or a ballpoint needle and again it's all about that little test piece to check what your stitch is like before you start making your garment. Other techniques you might use are to sew on an overlocker. Um, that will, uh, if you've got a four thread overlocker, then that will sew and finish the seam at the same time. But don't worry about finishing your seams too much in stretch fabrics because when you cut them, they tend not to fray anyway. Just check if you've got a waffle stretch, then that sheds little um, cotton bits. But you can check that out at your testing stage when you have a go on your machine and see which is your best stretch stitch. Will you need to be finishing the seams or not is something you can check. Number five is to check your seam allowances because if you decide to cut a pattern out and it has a 1.5 seam allowance and then you decide to make it on the overlocker, then your seam allowance on your overlocker is going to be a lot smaller. So you would get um, maybe on your shoulders here where you join on a shoulder seam. If you've, if you've got more on the sleeve head and you've got more on the sleeve, then you might get some very funny sleeve heads where um, you've, you've got too much fabric because you're, you've only used very, very narrow seam allowances. Also, if you've got a pattern that um, is supposed to be negative E, so it's tight on you and smooth fitting, um, if you sew with an overlocker, you might lose that sort of tightness um, because everything will be slightly bigger. If you want to use your overlocker, then you'll need to trim down your pattern to adjust the seam allowances. Talking of ease, different patterns um, have different amounts of ease in. So sometimes you might have a boxy t-shirt um, that's not close fitting on your body. So there you can use maybe different types of uh, fabric with different stretch because you're not relying on the stretch to make a body shape. You're just making sure that it can go over your head. But if you have a top with negative ease, like a, I'm just using an example of like a thermal base layer or a, a top that's got really smooth sleeves, then you'll need to make sure that you have the right stretch. So check the ease of the pattern and you, it won't tell you that. You just need to look at the model fit and how they're wearing that item of clothing from the drawing. So you'll be able to see, is it a fitted item? Does it skim the body or is it a boxy fit? If you can determine which of those it is, then you can decide which of your fabrics to use um, depending on how much stretch it's got. You can make a disastrous ease error if you cut your fabric on the wrong grain. So if you've got a nar, so say you're using a Ponte Roma, for example, that's only got stretch in one direction, you must make sure that when you put your pattern pieces on, the grain line of the straight grain that's not very stretchy is running from neck to hem. And the stretch in the Ponte that's across the width goes across your body. And you can't just switch that around. Um, very early on when I was sewing, I made a pair of pyjamas and I couldn't quite fit my sleeve on, so I switched it. But then I ended up with like a really, really tight sleeve and then a sleeve that went really long off the end of my arm. So when I moved my arms, I didn't have any stretch because the stretch was going in the wrong plane. So make sure when you place your pattern pieces that you put them on the right grain of the fabric that gains the stretch that you need. Number seven is to find a good technique for hemming because just whipping up and double folding the hem on some stretch fabrics doesn't make for a very good hem. It either makes it too bulky if you've got really thick fabric or it will make a wobbly hem 
um, where the, the layers of fabric going through the machine are squidged together between the feed dogs and the foot and then it ripples through the machine. So take a look at a hemming video to find out how to hem knit but some good tips are to interface the seam so you can put um, a little bit of stretch interfacing around the hem and then turn it up because that will stop it uh, wobbling but you need a stretch interfacing otherwise um, you will have taken the stretch out of the waistband you won't be able to get it over your head. You can also use a hem tape which is a sort of piece of interface and it's very very light and it's gluey on both sides and that will hold up your hem while you're sewing and then when you sew with a zigzag stitch when you pull it because it was so light and feathery it's almost it's almost sort of melts inside and um, that's a good way of trying to hem a t-shirt or hem sleeves. Another way that you can try and get a better hem if you're getting a wobbly edge on your hem is to cut some strips of greaseproof paper, baking paper and put those on top of your fabric and sew your hem seams and then rip the paper off afterwards. The paper on the top means that the foot can move along the fabric without sort of gripping into the ribs and the interlock of the jersey fabric. You will need again to try that out on a little test piece so that you can see which technique is working for which fabric. Talking of techniques, um, most patterns that are for stretch require you to put on some sort of neck band, whether that's a V neck shape or a round shape. And if you can crack that scale, you've got a huge range of patterns to choose from. So try and find a way of making sure that you get your neck band on carefully. If your neck band is on too tight, all of here will be rippling. If your neck band is on too loose, then your neck band will flop forwards. So you need to quarter your neck band, so put pins in the quarter positions and use those to line up the uh, neck band with the neck hole. Of course, if you've got a deeper neck band that goes down here, quarters isn't going to work. So you're going to have to find the centre and the back and then find out where the shoulder seams are. But take that bit carefully because the rest of stretch sewing is really, really quick. If you put the neck band in carefully, you'll get a really professional finish. If you want to add details to stretch fabrics, like applique, then you will need to add each piece separately. So you can't just sew from one leaf to the next leaf to the next leaf, because then you will have lost the stretch. So each of those flowers is sewn on and tied off, sewn on and tied off, because then they can all work independently of each other. But adding details onto stretch fabrics is really great fun. The pattern that I really like to use is the Alison Glass Knit Essentials pattern. That's what this t-shirt is from and it gives you lots of different ways of customising stretch knits. My last top tip or recommendation is to learn to sew underwear because if you're sewing with cotton jersey um, and some cotton mixed jerseys then the scraps that you've got left over are perfect for making knickers. I use the Tilly and the Buttons Iris knicker pattern. It's got lots of different variations, different crotch rise, um, different styles and actually you can use all your jersey scraps up and make them work for you. I have a bag that I keep on the go and in here are all my little jersey scraps. So I've made a t-shirt, sailor t-shirt. I've got, this is a spotty fabric that has a little bit of viscose in it. So this one's a bit drapey, but it's still good for underwear. I've got just a cool range cotton, so that's good. I mix them up sometimes. A little bit of um, art gallery jersey left, but even just the small pieces like this, I can cut the gusset piece out of that. And sometimes I make the front and the back in different fabrics. So my last tip is to add a skill to the skill you're trying to learn. So those are my top 10 tips for sewing stretch fabrics. You can also take a look at our stretch fabric range over at Minerva and if you have made something in stretch then we would love to see it. So make an account with us, share your makes and take a look at the discounts and offers and events on at Minerva at the moment. Thanks very much for watching, see you again soon.